All right, so the broadcast is live on Trey's stream. Uh, if you guys want to go and reshare that post. Um, gotcha. But oh, so, it's, so there's a live on Trey's stream and then a live on, like, on, on Twitter. Uh, twi okay, gotcha. Yep. Which one would you prefer we share there, Dave? The Trey or the... Or the uh, so what I usually do is I'll share Trey's um, live stream and then I'll, in my post above it, I'll say, like, you know, come see us at live.twit.tv. Got it. space or... Okay. Right, I'm going to start the five-minute countdown here. Assuming you guys are all good to go. Just drag it over. All right. Wow, yep. that's pretty fancy. So do we invite people that join the Hangout? No, 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 no. You're not sharing the invitation post. You're sharing the one that says, like, that has the video yeah, player remember. and stuff. Yeah, just from the from the, the hangout public. itself, <laughs> the, the public post, <laughs> or from the uh, from, like, from, from trade page. Yeah, yeah. Do not post the link to the hangout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a party. A million, a million people in here. <laughs> I did that on my first Twip hangout though. Yeah. <laughs> I have fun on my vacation. That's awesome. I, on my vacation, I learned more about Jeff. So did you now, Tony? New Jersey. That's amazing. Tony. No, but I was there with him. He's got his headphones out. He can't hear us. Her sister has three kids. You can't wait to hear this. <laughs> well, we're this is all recording. Um, you can have three kids. I'm gonna mute Tony. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah, you might want to before he says something. And Gavin disappeared. Yeah, he, he was. Oh, I'm thinking Mark. Okay. So yeah, so basically, the, uh, near, you know, near the end of the show, at that point, we'll do the, we'll run through the discoveries real quick, yep, um, and then do a quick plug for Twit Photo tomorrow, and that's pretty much the end of the show. Okay, hey, Tony, I, I don't know it, what. Uh, are you gonna plug that? Because I don't know what the. Yeah, plug I can is. plug it. Yeah. Okay. If I remember. Well, you can send it to me, and I can do it. I don't care. Hey, Tony, you can hear us again. I muted you because you were talking about something. You're talking about something naughty. So you're muted right now. <laughs> you can feel free to unmute yourself. How about now? Now we hear you. There we go. All right. Sarah Franz, how are you doing down there? I'm good. I'm great. Yeah. It's busy time. This go time. This is your time. busy season. This yeah. is go, go, go. Nice. Yeah, it's good. Weddings. Yeah, we have two this weekend. One at the Ritz in Laguna and one in wine country and winery. Nice. Saturday, Sunday. Love it. This is going to be a good show, guys. I'm excited. Apologies there. No worries. We're about ready to roll. No, we need Martin. Martin has two minutes and 24 seconds to get back in here. <laughs> Frederick, did you Twitter the link? I did not. I'm going to though after we go live. <laughs> well, don't don't Twitter the Hangout link. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I am too nervous to do it now. I'm just gonna retweet you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like that plan. I'm like if anybody makes a mistake, it'll right. be here. It'll I'll, be I'll put I'll, I'll put the link to the the real post that you're allowed to link to. Thank yeah, you. put it put it in the chat. Yeah, put it in the chat here. Oh, there we go. That's a good way to do it. Beautiful. Right. That's the post. So we That's can use that. All right. Yeah. Send that to all your friends and family. If you're gonna twi if you're gonna do it on Twitter, just do live.twit.tv. You don't need to link to okay. the post or anything. Yeah, I'm just gonna send that out and shorten that. <clears throat> We're live now. <laughs> we got. Uh, one minute, ten seconds. Is this where we all start counting down? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we should twit, Dave, then twit, twit, just twit, twit.live.tv. That was a mouthful. Okay. Hey, Martin, I just saw your email and I was like, I just emailed you the link. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, this is not doing great at the moment. What's wrong? Still frozen on you? Yeah. Um, 
It was fine for a while. You might want to try oh, a different browser or restart. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try a different browser. Okay. Uh -oh. We'll just start without you. You want to start without him and then... Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, when he pops in, then you can introduce him. Okay. No worries. Are we ready? It happens a lot. We got about 10 seconds. All right. All right. Everybody's excited. <laughs> I'm afraid. You're afraid? <laughs> oh, no. We haven't done this before. All right. Oh, <clears throat> we are good to go. All right. You ready to roll? Yes. Here we go. All right. Well, welcome everyone to a very special yeah. Trades Variety <laughs> Hour. This is uh, Trades Variety Hour number 36, The Evolution and Revolution of Photography. And I'm here with a couple of my good friends, as you can see down at the bottom there. And there's somebody in here with a <laughs> crazy lens waving at the camera. But let's start. Let's, let's skip that. Let's That's start Alex. from left to right. Derek Story is in the Hangout. Hey, Derek. How you doing? I'm doing great, Frederick. Hey, we've been hanging out a lot lately, haven't we? I, I know. People are going to yeah. start to talk. We've got to start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my new best friend over there, right next to me there, is Gavin Syme. We did a, we did a hangout earlier this week, and Gavin blew my, blew my socks off with his awesome knowledge here, of photography Frederick. and the zone system and all that crazy <laughs> stuff. So, Gavin, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's going to be fun. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Also, another familiar face right there, Mr. Martin Bailey, coming to us from Japan. Hey, Martin. Good day, everybody. Hey, good good evening. Good <laughs> what, evening. Time, what time is it yeah. there? It's uh, 11 a.m. Doing good here. Good, yeah. good. Awesome. Cool. And Miss Sarah France coming to, from the wonderful city of San Diego. Hey, Sarah France. Hi. Thanks How for having doing? me. I'm super excited. Such great company. I know. This is awesome. This is going to be a great show. I'm excited. I know. Yeah. And then we've got Tony Wang there. And, you know, that's not Trey Radcliffe over in the right there. I just want to say, just go on record, <laughs> that that is not Trey Radcliffe in the right there. That is, that is Dave. That Dave is, is me. Making sure, making sure everything, Dave Veffer, making sure everything runs smoothly and promisingly as we, as we go through this hangout. Crossing so, your fingers. All right. Crossing your fingers, <laughs> yeah. We got, we got everybody in the hangout on time, and, uh, you know, it's rolling. So this is a big show, you guys. You all got the outline that, we, that I sent over. Um, what I want to talk about, well, first of all, we're gonna do, this is Trey's Variety Hour, right? So Trey, this is Trey's show. Normally what he do, does is, you know, we go through the show itself, and then at the end you guys kind of show or reveal a photographer on Google Plus that may not be known by other people but should be known by other people. So you're going to get a chance to screen share and so, show some other people's work and sort of spread the love, as it were. But... But before we start, all this stuff, I mean, the whole, the main topic of this show is the evolution and revolution, or you can flop those, the revolution and evolution of photography, and that's what I want to talk about. So I want to, I want to jump into this stuff. The main thing is, or one of the main things I want to talk about is just sort of a then versus now. You know, where were we? You know, back in the day, it was, and Derek, I know you know about this stuff, so back in the day, it was... <laughs> <laughs> Already oh. he's starting on them. <laughs> no, no, dis no disrespect. I'm just saying. You know I'm going to dye my hair one of these days. I'm going to come on and going to have like, you know, really, I'm going to like, my hair's going to be like Sarah's color. Don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. <laughs> well, you, you and I both know, you know, you and I both were shooting film back in the day, right? And right, you, right. You're no stranger to the dark room. You know all I that am stuff. not. So not. let so rewind. Get in your get in your H. G. Wells time machine. Go back in time, back to when you were doing the dip and dunk thing, and you know you had the smell of fixer in the air, and you were, you know, sort of excited to get that one print. You know, what do you miss? What's the thing that you miss about the dark room experience versus going into Lightroom and and or Aperture or whatever and making changes to your mm -hmm. photo there? Well, there's not a whole lot, but there is there is one thing I miss, and that is the uh, image a uh, print uh, coming up in the developer tray. I think that is still uh, one of the magical things that that we don't get electronically anymore. 
Yeah, just that, that magical print, just sort of seeing it reveal itself over time. Exactly, as, as it comes up, and then you're going at some point, you know, you go, oh, whoa, 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 stop, 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 <laughs> you know, as, as it keeps going. <laughs> and then it gets black. Yeah, it yeah, gets yeah. Black. Ah, okay, here we go. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but I, I think that, you know, that was, is what hooked me on uh, working in a chemical dark room. It's the first time I saw a print come up in developer tray. It truly is a magical experience. Very cool. All right. Well, let's, you know, I'm going to do this a little differently. So, you know, I started with that question. I'm going to ask all of you guys that same question as I move down the line there. But I'm also going to ask you to, just for the folks that may, in Trey's audience, they may not have been introduced to you. Let's give just a little bit back, a little bit of background on who you are and, and your sort of photography ecosystem or constellation that's around you. So, Derek, <laughs> what, what, what do you do? What, what qualifies you to be on Trey's Variety Hour? Man, people ask me that all the time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> what do you do every day? <laughs> so, I, I mean, I have a photography business. I actually shoot on assignment. I do all that good stuff. I, uh, I write a photography uh, column for Macworld Magazine and do reviews for them. And uh, I do uh, training videos for lynda.com, which I just love doing that stuff. And uh, I run a site called The Digital Story, which is my weekly podcast and, you know, all that good stuff. So, and then, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that's related to that, but that's sort of the core of it all. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. You're very busy and you're very I qualified. Am. I am. So, thank yes, you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, next up, I'm going to turn the, the spotlight on Mr. Gavin Syme over there, uh, who is, Gavin, I, again, thank you for coming on This Week in Photo earlier this week, and we did That's an awesome. interview, which is going to which is gonna air, hopefully, in a, in a week or so, but, uh, and now we get to hang out again on Trade yeah, Variety great. Hour. <laughs> so awesome. People are going to talk again, you know, I'm it's getting around, I don't know what's going on. It's a double win, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little jealous, actually, Frederick. But uh, oh you know. god, no, 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 don't worry. <laughs> All right, so Gavin, so let, let's talk about just you know first off, um, let's flip it on how I did Derek. So let's let's talk about just your history in photography a little bit, and you know what you know like I said, Derek. Let's like I said to Derek, what qualifies you to be on Trey's Variety Hour? Why are you a photographer? Well, well, some people might might can see that I'm not a photographer and I'm not qualified for anything. But, but setting that aside for a moment, I got into photography. It was back in the film days, actually, when I was, when I was 12, and, and I thought it was cool because I had a 35 millimeter EOS 3. Remember that one? Um, mm -hmm. But uh, anyways, I, I started a business when I was 17 or 18 and you know, kind of did the wedding thing and the portrait thing and gradually over time have grown into uh, doing the Pro Photo Show podcast, making tools and teaching workshops for photographers. Yep. Uh, on my, my Sime FX line. And, and really the past few years, I guess what's really changed me is I've gotten a lot into studying, uh, m making large wall pieces, studying ways that we can take photography further than just, you know, taking pictures and having them on hard drives and, and try and, you know, reference back a little bit to history and 18th and 19th century art and beyond and, and just try and push ourselves. And that led into studying more with history, getting into 4 by 5 So, you know, you mentioned what do you miss about the darkroom and, and developing film yeah. and I'm like I don't miss so much because I just developed four by five negatives last week and and there's there's nothing like pulling that four by five negative out. So you're going back to and, the future then, right? A, a little bit. I mean, I'm still scanning. I'm doing digital. I'm a digital kid at heart. I just I just love the what it's taught me and how it's made me slow down. And also the the real reason I got into four by five was I wanted some more resolution for my really large wall pieces. And uh, and and so, but it's it's been a great experience. So I I like to play with things and try things and I I've. Uh, kind of built my business around having time to tinker, so love it's been it. a blessing. Love it. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for that, Gavin. And Thank before you. We move on to, before we move on to Martin Bailey, folks in the Hangout, you may notice that there's, on the end there, there's a, a thumbnail video with, it looks like it's a camera shooting at a ceiling that's with, lit with purple light. <laughs> that is the party. That is the Google Plus. So today was day zero, or the kickoff day for the Google Plus for Photographers Conference. Um, and Trey is there doing, well, he did a photo walk earlier today, and he's now at that party, which is why I'm hosting his show, <laughs> so, to allow him to party. And so he's going to try to, at some point, show up at the party and come to the camera and talk to us. So we'll see if it all works out, but regardless, we have a, we have a feed coming in. So let's move down the line. Martin Bailey, welcome. Welcome over. What's, what's, Thanks uh, for having me. No, no, thank you. So let, let's start off, you know, what, what makes you a photographer? Why are you a photographer? And then the second part of that is, you know, what do you miss most 
if anything, about the olden days of photography when we were, you know, shooting on you know, silver-based light-sensitive materials. <laughs> well, I I got my first SLR. It's always tempting to say DSLR, but okay. I uh, I got my first SLR some 21 years ago, and at the time I used to shoot uh, Fujichrome Belvia film, uh, the the positive film, and yeah. that I didn't I never uh, developed my own photographs so I, I I've never seen it come up in the in the uh, chemicals and stuff so I can't relate back to that but what I what I learned from the earlier days was that with positive film you had to nail the exposure in camera you you really had to make sure that it was um, it, you, you got it to within half a stop or you were going to be really struggling with your um, with your images in the 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 latter part of your process, but it it, do, it that gave me a good foundation to be a, a someone that strives for quality in my images. And I started a podcast almost seven years ago now. So a lot of what I where I've come from has been a good foundation in f shooting with film. But I have uh, embraced digital, and I the the whole sort of social networking and sharing. Uh, has all co played a big part in putting me where I am today, which is from two years ago. Uh, photography is my only source of income, so I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm se semi-qualified. I don't have the the huge working background that a lot of professionals do, but I uh, I do a lot of assignment work. I do a lot of uh, workshops and things like that, and uh, I'm I'm really enjoying my photographic life at the moment. Very cool. Very cool. Well, well, thank you for coming on, man. I mean, this is, uh, you know, we're going to, as you saw in the outline, we're going to definitely get into some of that stuff. We're going to talk about printing and, and then versus now in terms of how you can, sh how sharing has changed. I mean, some of, the, some of the things are obvious and some of them are not obvious. So mm. we're going to go into a lot of that stuff. I think it's going to be a great conversation. So next, uh, last but not least over there is Miss Sarah France. How are you doing, Sarah? And uh, th thanks for coming on. I'm great. Thanks for having me. I'm the only female on the show, so I'm here to represent. Yes, <laughs> you, you better you better represent, and that's why you're on the show because you you do represent so well. You're you're awesome. So what uh, you know, I I I'm, I'm asking this with a little bit of hesitancy because I know you're you're. You're young, so you may not even know what film is. <laughs> so, so, no, no, I'm saying that tongue in cheek. I, I know you know your way around cameras and all this stuff. So, so tell me, what do you miss about the olden days of photography versus you know today? You know, as much as you can speak about the olden days. <laughs> well, I have been shooting for ten years at least, okay. and I did start out on film, so I do have a little bit of background, but. I definitely, uh, I didn't do any of the processing myself. I think that's probably one of the big things. But, you know, the thing that I, that I really miss about the olden days is kind of the simplicity of, of the process um, in some ways on the back end when it came to the image, you know, the post-production part of things. When it was like what you shot is what you got, you know, a, a little bit. I mean, there was very little that you would do to the image and, I just loved um, how pure and, and simple and beautiful and classic the, the film images are still that I see a lot of times um, and, and that they were. And um, I think also the thing I miss, at least creatively, is I used to shoot a lot of cross-process images. Mm -hmm. So um, I would shoot basically a role at every wedding and just kind of that was really what you shot is what you got I mean it was so creative and different and unique and you had to kind of know what you were doing when it came to shooting that but if you nailed it uh, if you got you would get something so cool and so different and I still have some of those prints hanging in my house that I took on vacation and things like that and I I miss cross process a little bit. I tried doing it in post production, and it's just not the same. There's something that tells your brain, like, no, you're not supposed to make it really contrasty like that, or that little bit of difference. So um, I miss a little bit of like the mistakes that turned out so cool, you know? Yeah, yeah, the it's happy like accidents. You yeah, you don't make mistakes that much anymore, or if you do, you fix them or correct them. So I kind of miss that. 
Sarah France misses the mistakes. That's the, <laughs> that's the, quote, the quote of the night. Well, you know, I, I have some extra ones I could lend you if you need some mistakes. <laughs> My images are just too perfect now. Yeah. So okay. So anymore. just just a little bit of background on you. So you're like I, I you know foreshadowed in the beginning. You're based in San Diego. Who is Sarah France? Um, I am a I'm mostly a wedding photographer. I do some commercial work as well, and um, I dabble in bag design. I I have hosted podcasts in the past, but don't currently now. I just get on podcasts like this, so that's really nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, I also do a lot of presenting and speaking, and I have a couple of training videos out on Aperture, on how to use Aperture. So Very cool. that's Very a cool. little bit about me. You had a lot going on, just like everybody <laughs> on the show. So that yeah. Was cool. All right, guys, so this is a, you know, and about me for the, the viewers and Trey's audience who don't know who I am. I'm Frederick Van Johnson. I host a podcast called This Week in Photo. I'm also a photographer and other stuff. If you want to know about me, go to my site, which we'll talk about at the end of the show, frederickvan.com, but uh, that's who I am. Um, but I want to get into this discussion. I want to jump in with both feet. Specifically, the next thing we're going to talk about is printing, then versus now. So, uh, Martin, I want to start with you. And, you know, guys, this is a conversation, so this is not a, you know, the word, this is not like a congressional inquiry where you guys can't <laughs> talk until someone calls on you. So feel free to jump in whenever you want to talk. Um, but I'll try to keep it balanced and, and round robin-ish as much as I can. But, you know, you don't have to rely on me to call on you if you, want, if you have something to say. But I want to start with Martin to kick the conversation off because, Martin, you literally wrote the book on <laughs> printing. You have an ebook out on printing. Uh, so I want to ask you, and you are, by the way, singularly responsible for me taking out my Epson 3800 and putting it back into my guest room, and now I'm printing again on it because of you and your ebook. <laughs> so, well, I, I'm glad you didn't just say you took it out and then put it back in the box. It, uh, that that would have been a shame. It's heavy to put back in the yeah. box. It's a one yeah. retreat. <laughs> so they're, they're, they're big. Yeah. So let's let's talk about you just just then versus now in terms of printing. You know the obvious like like um, like Derek was saying. You know what he was miss what he doesn't miss is like you you develop a print and it's that whole process down the line of getting an image and you may or may not get something that you like and like Derek was telling me a while ago it's not even repeatable. You know because all the variables change the chemistry changes the temperature in the room changes the you know everything is different when you try to make another print. So the, the chances of you making an identical print are slim to none. So tell me, what, what do you miss, if anything, about being able to, or having the option of doing a, a analog, say, VIP-based print process versus a digital workflow? Well, yeah, like I said earlier, the, um, I was relatively young when I got into this. And unfortunately, my mom wouldn't let me paint the bathroom black. To uh, to create my own little um, dark room when I was when I was a kid, but yeah. I uh, now I mean when Derek was talking about watching the image come up in, in the chemicals earlier, I I um, I started thinking about I I've got so many photographs, it's crazy, so many photographs of prints coming out the front of my printer. It's like, <laughs> and, and, I, and I think it kind of is you can relate to that. Because you you get a you get a similar like I said I've never done mechanical stuff, but I um I really love watching my prints come out the front of my printer. And yes. I, yeah. I'm sorry. Do you have any prints of prints being printed? I just had to ask. <laughs> I can make some. That would um, actually be but, cool. Yeah, it would. Um, I, I've got some very some photos that I really like actually. Of I mean I don't know if you can see on the wall behind me. I've got some. Um, some prints, uh, gallery wraps that I've done, and I've got a few favorite photos that are actually those in reverse, with, like with the the snow monkey shot. It's got the the head coming out backwards. Um, it's kind of like the, my printer's giving birth to a to a snow monkey. But um, I I generally, I mean, I enjoy that process. Uh, but I I really do revel in the the fact that we, we now have such excellent tools like Lightroom to, you know, you can save. I mean, it's kind of the reverse of what, what Frederick and Derek were saying. You, you, it's almost the reverse in that you can save a preset 
uh, in Lightroom, saving all of your profile, the margin data, everything that you want to save in that print. You can just create a preset and reproduce it exactly the same every time. Um, and I kind of like that reproducibility, but it's it's probably for me because I never did have that background of the, the chemical dark room. And I wish I did. I, I, I certainly, I'm not one of these people that's going to say that it doesn't matter because although I don't believe that my work would necessarily be any different if I'd got that, that background, I would have loved to have had the memories and at least been able to say that I, I did have a, a, a background with the chemical dark room and it may have, it may have helped me as well. Yeah. Yeah, Derek, what about you? I mean, you, you, you have been in the dark room, and you probably still have some, some fixer flowing around in your blood. <laughs> do, you, do you miss, you, like, the print side of it? Do you miss anything about that? Or, and do you plan on going back to maybe reminisce? Well, I, I did like the printing side of it. Uh, the part I didn't like was developing film. <clears throat> that was always, you know, a chore. We used the uh, metal tanks with the spools that you had to kind of wind it on just right, yeah. complete darkness, yeah. the whole deal. And then mess it up and redo it again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you had to bow it just right to go in there. Yeah. I mean, that was, um, you know, that, that part was pretty tedious. And then when I was, uh, I shot for newspapers for a long time, and the real big innovation in those days was uh, instead of trays, they actually had a, a little machine that you could feed the paper in, a rapid printer they called it, and then it would come out the other side and it would be fixed. And we would use that because, you know, the turnaround time for newspaper stuff was pretty fast. Yeah. So that, you know, that was like high tech in those days. But if I missed anything at all about the chemical darkroom days, it was the actual process of printing. And, I mean, Adam sort of said it in the sense that, you know, the, the film is the sheet music and the, the printing process is the performance. And uh, I really felt that way, too. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Now, now uh, Mr. Gavin Syme over there, I know last time we talked, you were, you were in love with a 4x5 negative that you had just made. Or <laughs> <laughs> so, so... You know, you you may not have been like buried in the dark room for hours and hours, like you know, like people that came along before digital hit. But you are you are sort of moving in that direction in the reverse. So you, I mean, clearly you still love digital. I see the prints on your wall and all that. But you are now, like we were talking about, you're moving into the area of shooting more film. So why is that? You know, studying the past has taught me. A huge amount about just light and art and all that kind of stuff and I guess I'm not trying to move back so much as trying to combine I mean I can I can foresee myself you know we may have noticed in the news like the, the Hassey H4Ds just dropped in price today or yesterday or something so I can foresee myself eventually not doing film anymore but I went to film initially because I said hey I want more resolution for, for these big prints and and printing is is something that I've gotten pretty passionate about I, I bought this 8300 back here Canon 8300 is a 44 inch roll printer and I'm sure most of us are familiar with that, but I've, it's just amazing what it'll put out. So I guess to me, the one thing I think that I've learned by going back to that, that 4x5, even though I don't do that for everything. I mean, I'm, when I'm in the field, you'll usually see it yeah. me out there with a, with a 5D Mark II or something and then, and then a Linhoff. It's, it's experimental, right? It's experimental, but my goal is that, you know, in, especially in the case of my pictorials, to get a some of my best work on the film because there's more resolution. I can scan that in and then, and then work with it. And even on portraits, a lot of times I'll challenge myself on portrait sessions. And when you're on a senior portrait session and you pull out a Linhoff and set that up, they're kind of like, you know, whoa. And, and in fact, last year I had a session and they actually chose, out of all the images, they chose the one color 4x5 neg that I had made and, and they bought a 40-inch yeah, yeah, canvas of that. So I, I think on the film and printing, to me, all that stuff kind, kind of ties together to... Me, Analyzing the process and, and that it looks like we got a we got somebody saying hi here. Yeah, Scott Kelby. Know. Is that Scott Kelby? Yeah, Scott Scott Kelby. Kelby. Is that hey, Scott, Scott Kelby? Somebody <laughs> needs him. Hello. <laughs> hey, there's Trey. Hey, what? Well, Kelby and Trey Radcliffe. What are you doing in my hangout? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Welcome to Trey Fred's Radio. Trey's gonna take us for a ride. Hey, Trey, can hey, you hear us? Can you guys hear me or like you did? Yes, sir. We can what? hear you. Yep. We hear you. We hear you. We hear you. We hear you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, start. We hear you. 
Look, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I'm sure it is amazing. I'm going to interrupt just for a short moment to show you around the party and we can say hi to some people. And then we'll go back to whatever the hell you guys were talking about that was amazing. Okay? So just a moment here. Let's go let's go say hello to people. Oh look. There he is right there. Scott Kelby. Scott Kelby. Hello, Scott. Scott Kelby. Hi Scott. Human words. Hi. Oh, you use human words. Hey. You're missing a lot of cheese. <laughs> yeah. Many ways to interpret that. <laughs> that. No. All right, let's, what do we got going on here? Rhetoric. So, uh, so tell us about this conference, Scott. Well, Trey's here, and that's really all you need to know. Trey's here. All the people are hanging around Trey, saying stuff like, "Hi, Trey." <laughs> yeah. Are you in his circle? Well, that's not true. Okay, let's go. Let's go see what else is going on here at the party besides Scott and Kelby. All right. Good luck. Have a good tour. Okay, we'll go. I understand that uh, Alex is over here, so I'm going to say it to Alex. I'll aim the camera away from me. You guys have seen enough of me. Look, there's uh, there's Nicole. There she is. There's Nicole. Hey, there's Ryan. Hey, Ryan, what's going on? Hey, Scott Bourne, how are you? Scott Bourne is in the house. Yeah. Here's uh, Boy. Scott Bourne. Hi, Scott. Can you, can you please say something offensive to everybody? Hi. <laughs> I think you should. Listen to Trey Rackman. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the power couple of photography. Hey. Cole S. Young and here's Brian Matiash. Nice. Oh, that 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 is a big oh, hey. Nicole and on one. Nice to see you guys. All right. Let's go see someone else. Good seeing you. I'll be back in a little while. All right. Oh, here. How are you doing? Good. We're doing a live hangout here. Hey, it's Matt Kl Kleskowski. See you. Well, here's uh, everybody. Hey, Matt. Uh, hey, Matt. Here. We got uh, oh, Derek. Hey, Derek. Hey, Derek. Story. Hey, got, Matt. Yeah. How you doing, man? Uh oh. Uh oh, uh -oh. No. Matt. Uh -oh. You're frozen. <laughs> We're gonna look at his face forever. <laughs> And they so froze. Nice Look at that. A <laughs> few <laughs> uh, weeks ago, on oh, here. They're back. There we go. They're back. Uh-oh. Are we frozen yeah. up? I froze yeah. everything. Frozen. Uh, Move to a better spot. I'm to my number one man to fix. We're all real crazy. I was going to get you We can fine. hear them. It's, it's broken. It's we broken. hear you. We hear you. Yeah, we can, we can hear you guys. Yeah, we hear you, but you're not moving. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it frozen on Matt's face. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you look a little like Keanu Reeves in that shot right there. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh. Okay, let's say hi to uh, Alex and his lovely wife. Hello, Hello, Alex and his lovely wife. Virginia. So, where, did, where, did, where did you come from today, Alex? Or yesterday? Uh, from... Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. It was fun here. And you came with your whole family. Who came? Oh, yeah. Uh, two daughters, Quinn, Lee, and Sonia. They're having fun now in the hip club. And we have fun. Cool. How many drinks have you had? Well, I've had two and two. Good to see you. We'll catch up later. We're showing people the party here. Got to see who else is around. Follow me, uh, Curtis. Yeah, you're there. You got your car from here. What's that? You got your car from this. Oh, I did. Yes, they better stay by me. Okay, who else is going here? Okay. So they're having a uh, 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 a contest to see who the winner is. People that came submitted photos, and we all have these ballots that we have to vote on. Uh, very nice photos everywhere. That's uh. Uh, people don't know this, but that's what Frederick Van Johnson looks like from the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> Trey could not resist that. That's a little known fact about Frederick Van Johnson. That's what he looks like from the back. Okay, what else is going on here? Hello? Hey, no, we're making people feel bad about not being at the party. Hello. How's it going? Slide door and where? Okay. Here's the cheese from the wine and cheese party. Up there. Hello, hello. 
Have you got some brie for RC? Hello, hello. I know. Ah, here's here's Petra Cross and Google. Hello. You're you're on live on YouTube Live. <laughs> all kinds of wonderful photographers on here. So, uh, Petra, tell us what you do at Google. Tell us all about you. I'm a software engineer in Google Tech. And you also are a photographer. And nice. 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 N
your photo box thing? It was on the accident. That was your photo box. Great. Yeah. But I can't be objective about it. Uh, where did where did you go? Well, we just said you need to start right? Okay. okay. It was a nice time. Good. And you're excited about the conference? Yes, I am. We're making everybody here feel feel bad. I know. The conference what's that, what's that red so light going on? Um, Get a second. <laughs> This, this, this Mac has an autofocus light. Hello, Peter. How are you? Hi, everybody. Hello. Good. Hello. How's your photo walk today? My photo walk was excellent. We did a uh, excellent group photo and a lot of good shooting around San Francisco in the Embarcadero. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. There was dogs and balls and ball <laughs> shoots. And, yeah, we even got kicked out of something. Yeah. We did. Right on. We got kicked out of uh, uh, the very building. Very building. We got kicked out of. Zipper uh, photo shoot. Let's get kicked out of. Yeah. Oh, That's Peter, where can people see your work? PeterAdamsPhoto.com or on Google Plus. Peter Adams. Great. Okay, I'll let you guys go in a second. I'll just give you a, a final look around. <laughs> hmm. Yes. Ah, uh, here's Sly Vegas. Hi, Googleverse. Hey, Sly. Hello, we're live on YouTube. Hey, Sly. How you doing, everybody? Good. Did you have a nice photo walk today? Yeah, it was fabulous. We had a good time today. We had a very good time. Yeah, the Marcadero was beautiful. Yes, thank you for everything. That was a wonderful, wonderful event. Thank you, too, Sly. Wow. And here's, uh, here's, here's Charlie Blake. Okay. There, there's, uh, so far, you'll notice I've only showed you two girls, because they're the only two girls in this party. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Charlie is girl number two at this party. <laughs> I think that's enough. Well, hello, how are you? I am quite well, thank you. Good. Do you have a nice <laughs> photo walk today? <laughs> Trey is awesome. <laughs> oh I, I'm God. not really aiming the camera not very well, so. <laughs> no, you're doing very well, <laughs> thanks, Trey. You're doing great, Trey. I'll right, we'll, we'll look around and then we'll let you guys go. <laughs> Got to really hang on on those swings there. there uh, my wife oh, may be watching here, so. Oh my God. This is like the Blair Witch Project G+. People are <laughs> judging the photos over here. All sorts of things going on. Hello, hello, you guys. Live on YouTube. Hello. I see Prince. Cool. Okay, let me get in front of some good lighting. Okay. All right, I apologize for interrupting. I hope you guys saw some familiar faces. And we did. Uh, thank you, Brett, for doing the show. I can't hear a word you guys are saying, if, if anything at all. Uh, thank you. I'll uh, now send you back to your regularly scheduled broadcast. <laughs> all right, Trey, thank you. Bye, Bye Trey. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I'll just awesome. leave it on. I will mute, okay? Yep. Yeah, mute is good. Yeah, mute is good. <laughs> wow, that's uh, that's unprecedented. I got it. <laughs> Whose chest are we looking at now? <laughs> anyway. Oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Anyway, that Let's was just great. Try. Okay, that's Trey. That's good. That's good. Okay. That was great. I just gotta say that was really I good. Okay. I knew that uh, was happen. And no, no other comments on that. That was uh, that was interesting. <laughs> Where were we? No further wow. comments, Your Honor. So Prince, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I did see some Prince there. I was ha so when, when he mentioned that they were like judging. It looked like people ju were judging Prince, and I was like, yes, this is a real, real get together. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm lost now. I forgot what we were talking about. I, uh, there was something that caught. I think. I, don't know. <laughs> I think we were talking about printing and just things related to it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So were you, were you, you were, you were, you were on stage, right, Evan? I think so, but I, I think I pretty much I mean, we can we can move on. Otherwise, we're probably going to run late. Bottom yeah. line is, I'm really loving printing. I think that just sending everything to the lab and just kind of settling for what we get, you know, whatever luster or whatever new wrap product or this or that. I mean, getting in and really uh, being able to print your own. I mean, I, I run off 24 inch uh, 24 inch prints as proofs because because I can't. Once you see it in print, it's not the same as seeing it on the screen. I can sit here on this big old 30-inch cinema display, and I can spend an hour like looking at it at 100%, and then I'll make a, a print of it, and I'll say, how, how did I miss that? So, I mean, aside from the different mediums, there's just something about printing and getting it into that tangible product. I, I think prints are 
for the most part, what's relevant to history. You know, you don't get to go into a museum and see hard drives. Well, unless yeah. it's a computer museum. You well, know, you, you know what? Let, let's let's Not unpack yet. that a little bit, Sarah. You know, you so you know from the standpoint of releasing the, the your bits from the hard drive and getting them on the wall or an album and all that. You know, conversely, you know, looking at digital and just people sharing things on Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus and that sort of thing. Are you seeing these social networks and services that, that you know, that, I, hey, I can see everything that you shot last night in a, in a couple of minutes and not have to worry about a physical print? Are those services just eroding away at, like, in your business, a traditional wedding, you know, you get a print, you make some wall-mounted stuff and all that thing? Well, people are enjoying images differently than they used to, so that's definitely happening. But I think in in my business, things have changed a little bit. Like they used to, in order to enjoy a print an image at all, they would have to print it, and and that was the way that they enjoyed it. So print sales are you know for four by six, five by seven, eight by tens are are pretty much non-existent these days. So what I'm finding more so is what are the innovative ways that that your clients want to enjoy their images and and um, a lot of my clients are still really wanting their album. So mm. you know I would say probably about 70% of my clients do wedding albums. Wow. So they're still really appreciating the the art form, but really our products now are becoming. Um, albums and unique pieces of art that they can put on their wall. So but they Sarah, I remember I remember back when the iPad just was introduced, you were one of the first people to start delivering iPads to clients, weren't you? Weren't you like like putting we, albums on iPads and giving them to as a, as part of your offering? We were actually delivering video iPods. That's how far back I started the process. Uh, Video yeah. iPods, oh wow. Video oh. iPods, before iPads were even around. So wow. we were basically loading the images onto video iPods and delivering them at the end of a wedding, and um, the clients were taking them with them. So that was kind of, an, I mean, that was, gosh, six years ago, maybe? Yeah, yeah. And then after the uh, honeymoon, they'd have to put them in a box and mail the iP iPods I, back to you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, it was archaic. But at the yeah. same time, like, they had their images after after that, and then they would basically reload it themselves. So yeah. that was, you know, they'd erase, the, they'd erase it and, and make it their own. But I had a couple clients who just, like, I'm not erasing this. It's perfect like it is. All that was on it was the images. Just their photos. kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, that was it. So um, I I really feel like the the printing and is still something that they're enjoying, but in a different way. So we have to embrace and understand what it is that um, that our our clients want now, but more so like what they're going to want in the future. And I still I agree um, I agree with Gavin. Um, really, that printed medium. There's nothing like it. So. There's still a place for that, but it's a matter it, what we have to kind of continue to figure out and help clients figure out for themselves is what that looks like in their home, what it looks like in those places that they enjoy it. I mean, mostly it's their home for, for my kinds of clients, but commercial clients are trying to look for unique art pieces and ways to display images in, you know, their commercial space. So. It's anything from metal to glass to, you know, a lot of these unique ways that you can kind of make images and, and really just a straight print. But a lot of clients are looking for something unique and different now. Sarah, so, can I throw a slight... I'm sorry, yeah, for, go ahead. No, for, go for it. Go for it. Go. Can I throw a slight curveball at you? And just kinda, I just kind of want to see your thoughts. I mean, what, what, to me, what we're seeing is, I mean, admittedly, the industry is crowded. A lot of people love photography and, and everybody, you know, that love photography seems to want to be in the business. So there's a lot going on out there. And it seems like the consumer value, even though, yes, people appreciate images on Facebook and on blogs and things like that, and, and they're relevant, and, you know, discs, they have their place and all that kind of stuff. But do you think that what they really appreciate and, and that the value of those, because they're so inundated with them, they're seeing so many of them, and it's just like streaming through all the time versus it's not, it's, 
it's more rare if you know these days to to walk into someone's living room and there's a 40 inch print on canvas or there's a metal or something like that mm -hmm. and do you think that in terms of the market and where it's going because the rest dare I say is getting so easy it's not easy to do it well but it's it's out there and it's all over the place it's, it almost feels like the consumers are losing track of the difference between a really good photo on Facebook and just a snapshot and and how does that affect our market in your opinion you know going forward which is kind of personally why why I really am into the print but what do you what do you think about that well I think there there is still really a difference and my my clients know the difference of that for sure, sure. Um, they they see the real difference of it but what they're it doesn't mean they're going to enjoy the social media any less than than okay. what they're enjoying but the the real difference is in they used to enjoy 4 by 6s and 5 by 7s the way that they now enjoy social media images right. I, I, in my opinion I love so that. I love that. That's yeah. fair. now what we're still what we're talking about is like okay you know we're not talking about 4 by 6 5 by 7 8 by 10s anymore like pretty much at all if they no. want them they'll they'll get them printed so right. the things that we've been looking at is how we can help them enjoy images like on their iPhones on their iPads and all those places that they're enjoying the images there and then what products can we introduce them to that they don't have access to or aren't currently um, inundated with so for instance I don't really carry that many canvas prints because they can get a canvas print at exactly. Costco so I don't sell canvas. I mean, I have the canvas prints, but my clients never want them. They want the thing that they haven't seen. Or, right. you know, my creative eye is kind of like, okay, we did this really cool thing. We can do it on wood, or we can do it on this metal, or with glass. Or so yeah. they they have modern homes. They have un they want unique pieces of art is what we're trying to sell them as opposed to um, selling them like a loose four by six or five by seven. Love it. Love it, Derek. Derek, did uh, social media kill the four by six? And thankfully, <laughs> exactly. I have hours and hours back in my life. I, you know, I, I went through the process about a year ago because I, you know, I, I've been shooting for so many years. I just had so much stuff. I went through a process where I actually threw away boxes and boxes and boxes of four by sixes. Oh. I had gone through them. I pulled out the ones that uh, that I wanted to hang on to, and everything else had to go. I was tired of lugging them around, and I, I like having it in digital format much better. That being said, though, and I was listening to what uh, Sarah was saying, I think that. For you personally, as a photographer, as an artist, that if you one of the ways that you can separate yourselves from you know the 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 great mass of uh, photography is to make uh, excellent prints, to make nice. Yeah. Big, I mean, 13 by 19 inch, a beautiful. Mm. If you have a portfolio of beautiful 13 by 19 inch prints that you can show anyone or if you have them on the wall uh, at your place, you have separated yourself uh, from uh, many, many, many photographers. And I still think printing today, rather if you do it out of a, you know, an Epson uh, 3800 or R2000, whatever you happen to be using, if you can, if you doing that, if you see it all the way through, you take the shot and you see it all the way through to a beautiful piece of paper, uh, you are in you know, the top 10% of uh, you know, photographers out there. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Martin, Martin, you've got you I'm looking behind you and you've got, you know, a a beautiful printer back there on your on your left and then on your right there's a mm. gigantic printer <laughs> that stretches out of the frame, you know. <laughs> so, when was the last time you printed a 4 by 6 to give to someone? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was last November. Wow. Um, oh, you remember. Actually remember. <laughs> <laughs> I actually so here's the thing. Um I, I think that this is, it kind of ties in with, you know, what we're doing as photographers. And like Sarah's catering to a, a, a type of um, customer that wants a certain thing. And an, another group of people may want something else. And I think that there's, it's, it's important to know what your own customers want. And for sure, you know, Sarah's creating exactly what her, what her clients want. Um, mine have... I mean, I, I do two things. To me, printing is two things. It's my printing for uh, printing my, my nature and wildlife work, 
which is more fine art and uh, that goes I sell individual prints to people that just want that work yeah. uh, but I also do portrait work as a, a, a part of my business and those people want a different kind of print and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm providing those guys with uh, really good quality prints but they do still sometimes that they'll, they'll ask for a few big ones uh, but they're, they're also sometimes still here in Japan they'll say and we, we want a bunch of four by fives as well or or you know five by seven and so I, I actually do do re, re, recall the last one because it was a it was followed a portrait shoot last year in November I think the the last time I printed them was was um, was December time but what I actually did was I print I printed them on 24 inch roll paper on that thing behind us and then I just used a circular a rotary cutter and cut them out so I, know, I, I was Martin, it's almost like you know looking if someone has been in your your office there and they've seen all the prints on the wall and the giant printers in the background and then one day you give them a four by six it's almost like a passive aggressive <laughs> insult right <laughs> well I um I mean you, you guys know I mean Derek just mentioned that the 13 by 19 inch por portfolio I I was posting on G plus a few weeks ago um, and I think I mentioned on twip as well I bought a, a Pina Zangaro, um, it's a Camden aluminium or aluminium um, <laughs> portfolio case, and I populated that with some 50 13 by 19 inch prints, and my clients are loving them. Right. Um, yes, you know, absolutely. You you walk in with a with a presentation like that, and although obviously they're saying, oh yeah, we, we love your work, but they're also asking questions about the print, the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the the first person that I showed it to was actually the chief editor of a a major landscape and nature photography magazine here in Japan, and he was all over it. Um, and he was he was not only you know praising me for my work, but he was asking what sort of paper I used, why I used matte over gloss, and lots yeah. of different questions. So it puts you in Derek. I mean, I'm I'm happy to say that I'm in that 10% that Derek mentioned because that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly what I took to my client. You might um, need a little I'm higher percentage than that, Martin, but we'll we'll keep moving. <laughs> uh, you're, you're too you're too kind, Derek. Um, but but no, I mean it's it all really comes down to what your clients want, um, and that is on on so many levels. You, we all have a whole number of different clients. We have people that buy fine art prints from us. Uh, we have people that have had had us shoot their portraits and want something to hang on the wall, and they, you know, there are people that want stock images and things as well. But um, one thing that I wanted to just quickly come back on before we move to someone else is Gavin earlier mentioned doing proofs on 24 inch, um, mm -hmm. and I, we we had a, a topic on my one of my live hangouts that I did yesterday about um, pixel peeping being an evil word, and I don't I really don't think it is. Um, yeah. And what what uh, it, it's there's, there's two things about it. Of course, the image itself, without it being a beautiful, artistic, well composed image in the first place, you don't have any reason to pixel peep because it's not going to make your your final cut anyway. Sure. Um, but if you're going to print something at 24 by 36 inches, then you'd better get in there and pixel peep and just make sure that you've got all of your dust out there. You make sure that it's critically sharp where it needs to be. Because once you've spent 15 bucks on getting on actually printing that thing, and you find that that little piece of dust that you missed, it's like ah, oh, you know. I I have I have 30, 24 by 36 inch prints, which are basically now printer covers, um, because I, I you know I, I I missed a few little pieces of dust and stuff like that. So pixel peeping is not a bad thing if you're going to be creating large work from that. And well, I agree so easy that to miss things. It is. Um, I, I agree that you don't have to pixel peep if all you want to do is create work for the web. But if you're going to print it, you better make sure that it's at, it's at the quality that you that you want you want to pass over to your customers. Now, Mark, yeah. we, we talked about this before. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Derek. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to, to finish that point, which is exactly why printing puts you in a different category, right? For all the things yes. that he yes. just said. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So and I, I was going to I was going to add on to that. So why so Martin and we we talked about this before on this week in photo but th th for this audience can you explain why you decided to invest money in the hardware and the ink and all that stuff mm -hmm. to have the you know have your printers with you 
in the same room rather than just sending off a uh, you know the the data to a lab and having them print it and send you back a box of glorious whatever size <laughs> mounted and all that you know well part of it is because for me i part of my product is fine art prints that i've created and i know that we'll never unless we actually get back into the studio we'll never get back to the original meaning of the word original print uh, where the the artist actually printed them but i still like to position even digital prints in that way in that I am the one that has gone through and pixel peaked. I'm the one that soft proofed it. I'm the one that's actually cared for it as it came out of the printer and then checked it to make sure that there are no dust spots. If I was to just allow people to buy things directly from our website, which I can do from Photo Shelter, um, via a third party pr printing service, and they order a 24 by 36 or, or a 40 by 60, and it's got a dust mark on it that I missed, then I'm going to be kicking myself. I don't want that kind of quality on people's walls. They probably wouldn't tell me about it, but I, I want to be able to look at it when it comes out of the printer and, and inspect it and say, oh, damn, I missed that. And then I'll spend another, another $15 to create a new copy or what, you know, however much, I mean, depending on the paper, these things can be like $25. Um, I, would, I would rather be there, be the one that can do that. Plus, I can, I can also... Uh, sign them and package them myself and make sure that the quality is there from from start to finish now you know Sarah France you now you obviously come down on a different side maybe not a completely different side of the fence but you know maybe on top of the fence because you send your images out and they you have a lab that does all the processing and printing and you know of course you work very closely with that lab on quality control and you know they know exactly what a Sarah France print looks like, but you don't have a bunch of printers in your house that you're creating your albums on. How do how do you reconcile that with what Martin and Gavin are saying about creating the you know, having that that personal thumbprint on each image that goes out? Well, it it comes down to what what he prefaced it with, which is your your clients and well, who you're creating for and and what you're creating for. So. Mm -hmm. Um, every different, there's a million different kind of photographers and this conversation is different for every single one of them, you know, mm. print is different in the wedding market and, and in the commercial market completely. Um, I, I went out to the Palm Springs Photo Festival and hung out with a bunch of commercial and, you know, fine art photographers and I was floored with how different the experience was for them and how important printing was to them and, and was for them. So, um, you know, it's a very different, that's a very different industry and market. So for us, based on what our clients are looking for and how we're best servicing uh, the wedding clientele, um, we're looking still for unique ways to do things for the clients, which may end up bringing us to printing our own images one of these days. But right now, um, our clientele is looking for, uh, they're looking for the fast images, they're looking for easy access, they're looking for social media type stuff, and then they're looking for an heirloom. Um, it might be, you know, I have a gigantic prints in my in my studio and in, and in my house so we do you know I always oh sorry my big light went off I always say the the biggest print wins I just because I had a print in my house that a friend had given to me who was a landscape photographer and it is it's beautiful and gigantic right so they walk all through my house and they see all my wedding images everything's gorgeous they get to this one landscape shot and they're like that is amazing, you know, and I'm like, you just saw all of my work and, and all you want to talk about is the one, the one image in my house that's not mine, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I determined right then the biggest print wins, not that his work wasn't beautiful, Well, you know, Avedon, Avedon based a whole career on that notion right there and it worked. <laughs> you, you know what, I, 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 I want to, I, I think bigger is better. That's all yeah. I, you know. Can I just add one last thing, um, I don't, and obviously we can, we can continue to build on this, but yeah, I did want to also say, and I think this is something I mentioned before on TWIP as well, is that another major reason that I've made this part of my business is because I enjoy printing. I, and I'm sure that that's part of what it's like with Gavin and also with Derek as well, in that we, we enjoy the process. And so if I can build my business and make part of my income from doing something that I love doing, then that's, that's a big thing to me. Um, and that's also kind of 
part of the reason why I wrote the my my book in that I wanted to make I know that a lot of people have tried printing especially in the earlier years and had a bad experience and decided that it wasn't for them and I've heard from so many people since releasing the book that they people are getting back into printing because they I I kind of removed all of the the um the the mist and, and fog around it it's it's not as difficult as it used to be and it, once people get back into it they generally seem to enjoy it hey martin what's the name of your book and where can people get that it's oh thank thank you very much dave um it's it's called making the print and it's from craft and vision it's one of david de uh series yeah and it's what it's like five bucks right yeah five books 65 pages it's one of their master class um books so yeah it's, it, there's a lot of information in there if, awesome. if you're a photographer and you have an iPad, it should be on your iPad. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hey, 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 Frederick, can I? Oh, sorry. Right, sorry. Go ahead, Gavin. Go ahead. Um, can I just can I just throw back really quick, and I, I, I won't be long winded, but Sarah touched on something that I thought was uh, was really important when she was talking because she talked about uh, the the canvas, the inkjet gallery wrap, the jacle, and and how she she's not really that into those. She doesn't do a lot of those. It's not what her clients tend to go for because. It's kind of a high volume thing. I mean, we can get those at Costco and Walmart now. And I, I think that it's it's really valid to consider. Even not that everybody has to do it my way, but but it's we need to add value one way or the other. In in my studio there's not a single Jaclay canvas on the wall. If I make a canvas, I do it the old way that, that has been around for like fifty years where you make a print and then you send it. I send it actually to canvasmount.com. There's this company down in, in Yakima and they do it the traditional way. They strip the backing off the paper, you send them a print and they mount it to the, wow. a canvas, this really heavy canvas and, and then they put four or five coats of lacquer on it and when you're done you, you got this print that you can, you can slam on with your knuckles and wash with Windex and they actually have a video of their process on their site but whether you do it that way or whether you use metals or whatever is kind of a, uh, an approach to do, I think it's relevant to think, to, to consider this. You know, the gallery rep or, you know, it may be nice, maybe it's fine but there is a perception there, I think. There's a way that people have kind of come to think about it because it's, it's, it's kind of high volume. It's kind of everywhere. You buy a 50-inch gallery wrap for your bedroom at Ikea for $49. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Or, or you see a Groupon for one. Yeah, Anytime exactly. you see a Groupon for something, you can <laughs> it from any of your product list. Yeah. Derek, what were you going to say? Oh, I, you know, I was just thinking uh, of a wild idea. I've been actually playing with this idea for a while. So, do you guys know the the Brent Weston story? What he did at the end of his career? Um, no, tell it. Uh, what he, he is pretty interesting, and and I actually think there's a parallel today. So, what he did was he he burned everything. Uh, all of his work except for the stack of prints that he really thought was good. Wow. Everything else, everything else went because his his thinking was. And there's actual video. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. There's actual video of him, like you know, literally burning you know these prints. Oh, wow. You're going ah ah, <laughs> give that to me, please. Um, and so I was thinking, you know, what a wild idea to only you know to be in control and to leave only your best work behind. And you know the the archival quality of printing, of course, uh, can outlast you know a lot of digital. Uh, images, depending on how digital is stored. And I was thinking, wouldn't that be wild, uh, you know, just in my own case, if the only thing, you know, when I get to a certain point where I feel the clock winding down, is to get rid of all the digital stuff, and then whatever I have printed up until that point, that was the stuff that was going to survive. I challenge you, Derek Story, to do that. I challenge you. <laughs> That's adding value. <laughs> so Derek, let's let's hang with you for a second. Man. So let's let's yeah. let's uh, like switch the topic and talk a little bit about how the internet has changed your style and oh, the yeah. subject matter of what you shoot. You know, from you know, rewind back a few years to when we didn't, the internet hadn't proliferated to where it is today with all these social networks and different photo sharing services. To now, you know, how has that changed you as a photographer in terms of what you like to shoot and what you do actually shoot? Well, I mean, I think the real thing for me what the internet has done is it has allowed me to do what I want to do more. And what I mean by that, the you know, I I when I was working, I've worked with a lot of great companies over the year. You know, Riley Media, I worked with them for quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, it was all online stuff, and the online work has provided a, a revenue stream for me to allow me when I go shoot. I only take jobs that I want, and I only shoot what I want. So for me, the internet is has been a really, I think, in a lot of ways, made my career 
you know, wonderful. And I think also in terms of photographers sharing ideas and sharing images, I think it's, it's been fantastic for that. So, you know, when I was uh, much younger, we would go to camera club meetings, you know, once a month and, and uh, I would read a lot of magazines and books and go to art galleries and that was pretty much it. Whereas now, any time of day, day or night, uh, I can tune in and, and find great photography or find someone talking about photography. So I think that part of it I, I, really, I really like a lot. It's, for me, it's been uh, almost all good. Yeah. Hey, Gavin, I want to ask you the same question. You know, how has photography <clears throat> or how has the Internet specifically changed your, your shooting? And, and then another twist on that I want to throw at you is, do you like back in the day I used to I used to go in the bookstore and buy photo magazines, you know, and, and just like oh look at all these cool shots in there and like, different techniques and all that stuff. And I still do yes. from time to time, but not as much as I did before. Do you do that? And then, you know, so that's the second part of the question. Has the internet changed the way you shoot and are you a do you still buy dead trees in the bookstore? <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm a print guy, so I do love paper, and I do I I don't get as much chance to read as much as I'd like. But yes, I mean, if I'm, you know, I'll get in that mood where I'll go, I'll go to Borders or I'll I'll go to Hastings or something and 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 pick up the the, the latest outdoor photographer or four by five magazine maybe or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so that so well, I, I guess it's changed the way I consume in that, you know, I consume a lot of things online and I see a lot of things. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm young and I'm in that internet generation and I, and I totally relate to that. You're not that uh, young. I see that beard. <laughs> the beard helps. The beard helps. In terms, of how I, in terms of how I make images, though, I think over time, I think initially maybe the internet kind of, I, I, I fell into that groove of, you know, take lots of photos and post them to the internet. And as I've gone forward and, and you know, gotten more into refining my process, you know, doing a bit of large format and doing more with wall pieces and, and trying to narrow down to more of a fine art, the internet has kind of led me to posting less because the internet, I, I always, you know, more and more the internet got so prevalent with, you know, here's a blog post of I went to the Grand Canyon on a photo walk this morning and here's 4,000 photographs from that. And yeah. it kind of took me to the other extreme of, okay, I went to the Grand Canyon this morning, this is the one single photograph that I felt was relevant to, to convey what I felt. So in a way, it's kind of, it's kind of funneled me towards you know, thinking it through more and trying to add more impact be, just, just to stand out, I guess. Is that, am I answering the question right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's totally that's, – that's interesting that you take that tack on it because a lot of people go the exact opposite. You're like, exactly. oh, I have the Internet and I have Flickr. I'm going to use it – I'm going to use the Internet and the crowd as my filter. So I'm going to throw around. everything I have up there, yeah. and they will tell me what the good shot is. Well, and, and the, the <laughs> photographers seem to be sometimes – to me, it's undecisiveness, especially if you're dealing with a client on this level. I mean, obviously, if I, if I photograph a wedding, I'm going to be showing them more than one photo, but I do know a really amazing family <laughs> portrait photographer this is what you get. That, that does <laughs> just that. Wouldn't he that shows, be awesome to be that photographer? <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> you do that. You I know what like this is your print. Shot. Shut up. <laughs> I, I know of a family portrait photographer, that, and his clients trust him to that point where he shows them one image, and that's what they buy for their wall, and there's something to be said for that. When you hired a painter, they didn't make you 100 paintings. You, know, they, you yeah. trusted them to make you your masterpiece. That's so true. I, yeah. I agree it's, with you. It's, yeah. it's, and it's really changed the way I work, because now I go out, and I might spend an hour, I might spend two hours setting up for a single frame instead of, well, I'm going to go for a walk and take photos and, and hope yep. I get something good, and it's changed, it's changed everything about the way I, I see I love that mindset. Yeah, because last time we talked, you had the mindset of just the artisan and, sure. you know, not, not so much, okay, I have this technology, therefore, you know, I have a... I have a camera that shoots 9 million frames a second, so I have to shoot 9 million frames a second. Quantity you know? doesn't make us better. It's, it's yeah. like, yeah, you know, more chisels won't make you Michelangelo. That's true. Martin, what about you? I mean, I, what, you know, the internet, you know, internet, and, you know, what would you say the major impact on you and your shooting style has been now that you have the, the globe as your audience? And I think that, I think it works two ways. The uh, my in, my work has changed and I hope improved of so much just from seeing what everyone else has done. It raises your bar for you. You know, when you go on sites like 500px and stuff like that and you see some of the amazing work that others are making, it's like, oh, geez, I've got to, I've got to up my game here. You know, and, and although I've always, I've always studied a lot, I've always tried to improve my craft, my artistic sensitivities, I, I think that it still gives us a real good kick up the butt when you see what other people are making, especially. I mean, and, and this comes down that the, the people that empty their CF card onto Flickr are, are the ones that, 
you know, they're not even going to get you to look at their work because you're going to get sick of it after two, two or three of the same shot. Yeah. So that doesn't really bother me. But when you see a really, really good, finely tuned portfolio on somewhere like 500px, it's like, okay, this is, this is the inspiration that I need to up my game. Um, it's called jealousy but, mode, and then you want to go out and do better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, jealousy mode slash inspiration, right? Yeah. Right. The other thing, though, that directly uh, improved my work was that I mentioned earlier I started my own photography podcast. Um, that I, I think it seems the same year that Derek did. Um, three, you, we, 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 there's a thread on Google+. Plus. I think yours was that, three months before mine. Yeah, that I, 2005, 2005. But it was it was a lot. I mean, we we were like the some of the first people to start this, and yep. it was. Um, I found that the way I did my podcast was I used my own work to to explain what I did and share techniques with people. And obviously, there's a, there's marketing reasons for why I did it that way. But to begin with, I mean, really, it was just because I wanted to share and hopefully and pass on what I've learned from the from the web. And what I found was that. As I started to do that, all of the shoots after I started doing the podcast were like, I was running through checklists in my mind. I was, okay, so I'm going to talk about this in the podcast. And what I would do, would I would find myself going through these checklists and correcting mistakes that I could have made um, before I even made them. And so I, I would, I'd be working through this whole checklist of things and it just sort of, it got, it, it upped my game as a photographer in that it made me realize what I was going to do, the, the, the stupid things that I was going to do that I wouldn't be able to talk about before I did them in the field, and then that reflected in my work. And if, I mean, if, if people look at the first few years of my work that I started doing the podcast, it was, it was okay, but nowhere near as good, hopefully, as what I'm making the, for the last few years. And hopefully that's going to continue to be the case. Um, just continue to improve. And I think also during that time, a lot of it will have been organic because the, you know, the the internet was feeding me so much inspiration over the last few years as well. So I think it all plays in together. It, it makes us better in so many ways on so many levels. Totally, wow. totally. Sir Franz, notwithstanding the ease of use of being able to distribute your images fast and easily, going from film, you know, when you were when you had that workflow to get to go from the wedding day to the album or to the proof book, I presume back then, right? <laughs> to the proof book, <laughs> to the proofs, to selections, to the album and redos and all that stuff. The internet itself, how has it changed you as a as a shooter? Like has it has it fundamentally changed when you're when you're doing running through a wedding, has it changed what you see and what you feel like you're gonna shoot? I'm trying to think if it has. I mean I'm sure it definitely has because you know, um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'm a I'm a girl, so I spend a lot of time on Pinterest. I don't yeah. know if that's a no, we're, thing. we're not girls. We we're not girls. So. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> but I'm a girl. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> but like the seeing, I, let's just talk about even like seeing images on Pinterest. Just just there, or five, you know, 500 pics, wherever you go to enjoy images like I I run across so many images that give me ideas for poses or ideas for lighting or you know inspiration just from so many different places that didn't exist even a year ago I mean it, it's right. amazing like I I can remember um, I did an engagement shoot recently and I pulled a bunch of inspiration and pulled it into a Pinterest site and and I had it there on my iPad ready to go to be like, oh, yeah, I, I remember I wanted to do something with a shadow today. And I wanted, you know, I had kind of all these ideas and inspiration from it. So it definitely has changed my life. And in that has changed, you know, visually how I see things, where I get inspiration from, and, and how... Um, it also, I think just, you know, when you're putting images out for clients, at all of, I don't know about your clients, but all of my clients are like, oh, my God, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I love it. But you put it out there for a photographer to see, another, like your peers, and that's yeah. a different, it's a different thing. You know that 5,000 photographers are going to look at that image when you post it on Facebook. 
you pay a little bit more attention to like detail and what you're doing and and it does definitely up your game you know it's like um, there's a little bit of accountability there that you're producing great work and people people can see and know that that's the case or not the case pretty quickly yeah yeah it's crazy I mean the, the, the whole thing and how fast all this stuff is moving is it's scary and exhilarating at the same time so Sarah let's yeah. keep it on you for a second so uh, I want to segue into print services or not print services but online sharing services so photographers today have a myriad of different things that they can choose from it goes everywhere from yeah thank you Dave smug mug to to Flicker of well, Flicker question mark now too. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! hey. hey. I, I don't make don't my upset, Devin. Don't get the shovel out yet. <laughs> the shovel is. I mean, come on. Yeah, we're hammering nails in the casket. Anyway, so from smug mug to Flicker to 500 pigs to uh, you know all these different services. With Sarah, which which one should photographer? If you had to pick one. Your desert island choice of photo sharing services, which one would you pick? Oh my gosh, that's you gotta so pick one. Hard. You can't look at Dave's red hat over there, the smug mug hat. Gosh, I don't, I don't know. Like I, um, the photo sharing thing. I'm gonna go back a little bit to <laughs> what I said before, in that, you know, um, it depends on what kind of photographer you are. Yeah. So my photo sharing thing of choice has not is not going to work for any well, what's other yours? than a wedding photographer. What's currently yours? You're a wedding photographer. We, currently we are using um, a service called Pass, which Pass? is Pass P A S S. Okay. It's, I never heard of Pass. Um it's by it's by Show It. Oh, okay. David, David Jay. J's company. Got it. Yeah. And we um, have kind of gone berserk with it. Like, and it very, very quickly became my kind of like DOC, like my <laughs> drug choice. My oh, nice! I didn't know. <laughs> DOC. That's a Southern California I, I acronym, I clearly. To, I was gonna have to say what that was. We in but Northern yeah, California don't know about the drug of choice, so. <laughs> right, and it, and really, <laughs> I mean, it's for the same reason that that um, that you probably love whatever site that you're using the most. So um, it, it is really super friendly with iPhone and iPads and um, allows my clients to download their images in full res for the clients who have high res photos included in their, in their packages. Um, and it just has integration with our website really easily. So it's, it's a lot of things that I think are important. So for you, it might be integration. Um, it, for me, it's everything. So it's easy access for my clients. They can post the images straight to Facebook from the galleries, um, and it does all of the tagging for us. So links back to my website, and um, when they post, it gives it. They have like backend tracking that they're working on that we're going to have pretty soon that will allow you to see where your images are going and how they're spreading through Facebook. So for me, it's a it's a tool to see how my images are being um, viewed and we're trying to spread the images through the wedding community as quickly as possible, which usually is done through social media sites. But it's definitely not the kind of site I'd recommend for like anyone other than a wedding photographer. It's specifically wedding, is wedding for or portrait a wedding photographer, photographer, right? Right, yeah. So um, other than that, can you Oh, you guys can see. Sorry, I got it. Are you still there? I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. Um, <laughs> and uh, other than that, um, of the sites that you guys recommended, I mean, uh, to be honest, I don't use Flickr. I don't use SmugMug. Um, I use Pictosh for my clients. And for my own personal stuff, I've um, been checking out 500 pics, but I haven't really done anything with it. So currently, my favorite site to share photos on <laughs> is Facebook. Facebook? Oh, <laughs> oh you mean your, 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 the current favorite site to donate your images to so that they own the license? To? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I, don't, I am looking to book weddings. That is my goal. So if yeah. your goal, if the more people that see my images and share my images and and download my images with their with the watermark on it. 
the better a chance I have of reaching a bride. So yeah. that is really our goal now, and it's very different from most photographers' goals. Yeah, cool. Most All right, guys, let's, let's do like a like a group chat. I just want to have like a group discussion about like photo sharing services and which ones you guys use. So Sarah, Sarah's a friend of uh, a fan of Pass. Uh, you know, I fall on the Smug Mug side with Dave. I, you know, I'm a big fan of Smug Mug. I still have some stuff on Flickr, but you know, I'm I'm a little bit scared that the you know the Hindenburg maybe somebody's lighting a match in there. So, so Derek, Derek has everything he owns on Smug Mug. Where is everybody at? Where do you Where do you guys? Well, live? no, I you know actually I use more than one service. So I, I use uh, Google Plus for SEO. I use uh, Smug Mug for clients, and I use Flickr and Facebook for community. And uh, you know, so they, you know, they all have their their little niche. Actually. Oh, I got you. So yeah, you're yeah. you're just you're you're all over the place. Yeah. No, it's very targeted. <laughs> very focused. It's I'm like a, a laser beam. I'm it's like a, a laser strategy. beam of sharing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, where where are your where are your images at when you like online? Are you a Flickr guy? Or are you Smug Mug or what? You know, I used to I, I, I used to be pretty active on Flickr. I don't I don't think I'm the only one that's kind of faded away from that. I tried 500 picks and you know faded a little bit away from that. Uh, Pixodo.com is kind of fun uh, because there's those image duels and and that's fun. But I, I think most of those are for sharing with photographers and I, increasingly I mean I just I I go where the people are. So I mean I, I I post stuff to my Facebook fan page if I have a new piece. But ultimately, I want to get people going to my website because that I control. You know, I, Facebook is a little scary that you know, well, it's Facebook, right? So, but I mean, I use it because there are, the people are there. Is, is Google Plus is cool, but the interaction just isn't as good. Facebook interaction is not as good as it used to be. But, but I guess in terms of if I'm proofing, like if I had a a wedding and after the client came in and I projected for them. I would then put an online proof gallery. I'll, I'll typically use like collages.net or something like that. But I know right. Smugbug Smugmug's a great service for that sort of thing. And uh, but ultimately, I guess I'm trying to more and more to stay kind of centric around my website and then use a little bit of whatever social is 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 happening right now to try and to try and build that. Yeah, you're you're heavy on the marketing side, and you want to bring everything in. Just before before we move on, Gavin, you have a you have a, a site called uh, Sime Effects, right? Where you right. you have plugins and all that kind of stuff for Aperture and Lightroom and all that stuff. So your your ecosystem is more towards you want people to come into you, right? Well, in the terms of other photographers, yes, I want them to come in and see that you know, yes, I, I make really good presets, and you know, here's my my workshops that I do. And but in terms of the consumer side, I have different pages for these things. So on the photographer side, I'll have my my Sime Effects page, and I'll post tips there, and I'll post freebies on my website. On yeah. the consumer side, I'll post my latest pictorials and limited editions, or or the latest portrait I've done, or something like that, and try and direct them to that site. So I kind of have one site where everything's at. But in answer to your question, I guess yes. Either way, I'm trying to draw them to whatever whatever project is in the niche of, of where I'm focusing with that particular group. Got it, got it. And Martin, mm. you, you, <clears throat> you've been kind of silent over there about your photo sharing. Do you not share, <laughs> or are you, is your, are you sharing right now through this Hangout because your images are on the wall? <laughs> there we that's go. That's the only way people get <laughs> That's your version of photo sharing. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I do... A lot of things. I, I have a photo shelter account where I put stuff that I, I think people might be interested in using for stock. I, I post on Flickr sometimes because I've got my export plugins set up to do that and I'm, I'm getting less and less uh, into that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm moving away from that more and more. Sorry, Derek. Um, but I, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I, I, um, my, my first port of call now is, is Google+. Plus. Um, literally, I... I posted 10 photos of the annular eclipse yesterday, and I'm just looking at the latest count. I got 100, uh, 1,000, almost 1,400 plus ones, oh, 400, wow. 458 reshares, uh, 472 wow. comments. Um, it, so, I mean, it's like, and that doesn't happen every time, but I think this one got put into the what's hot section. Um, so, and that happens maybe once or so, once a week or so. So for in, in terms of getting eyes on my work, then it, it pays me to go to Google Plus first. Um, but are all of those people going to buy my work or hire me to take their, their, their photos? Probably not. Um, so it's really, it depends who you're marketing to. I mean, it, a lot of 
my business model is built upon actually doing workshops, seminars, tours, and things like that. So I want photographers to see my work and and like my work in in the hope that they'll decide to come and become a client in that way. Um, so I do I do various things. I I also put things on 500px because I love the site in in that it gives me so much. Um, but I I post on my own gallery, like I say, photo shelter for stock, lots of different things. Yeah, <clears throat> and Dave's put in the chat here that that, and I totally agree with him that uh, having that much juice on your your G Plus account can't hurt your SEO on Google. Oh, for all. sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's. It, it, it's um, one of those things that Google's like it seems to like me. I mean, I've, I've got a relatively active photography forum. Um, it's, I often it's because of your accent. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, but but they. I mean, I don't know. I think I did a few things right in the earlier years, and plus I've been doing it a long time. I've got some links in from some big people that uh, you know. I mean, even just this and working with people like you over on Twitter, but Frederick. You know, we we've got the a, a certain number of people linking over to us that all helps. Uh, yeah. But Google Plus, for sure. If you can get a, a lot of people looking at your work on Google Plus, it, it probably makes them say, "Oh, hey, this guy's doing something right. Let's let's yeah. give him a little bit more weight." Cool. All right, guys. Let's transition into the the Google Plus discoveries piece of this. On Trey's Variety Hour, uh, Trey likes to help elevate photographers that, for one one reason or another, may not be getting those thousand plus ones or the the you know, the five million followers that Derek Story has or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or that kind of love on Google+. Plus. So we want to use this forum as a way to shine the light on some photographers that may, may not otherwise get the light shown on them. So, uh, Gavin, let's start with you first. You, let's okay. do a quick screen share and just highlight a photographer who you think deserves to be put before the Trey's Variety Hour audience. Absolutely. Well, I don't even have a thousand plus ones, but, I, but I've got one here that, that should. So let me uh, go in here. Hang on. I'm, Let's oops, do a quick I, screen share, and don't forget to release it when you're done. You got it. Okay, so you should... Okay, open, share, selected window. Hopefully it's yep. coming up now. Yeah, we see it. This is, this is a guy I actually met when I was down on the Oregon coast at one point. I was down there with a mentor of mine, Kim Whitmire, and we were doing a... a, a big family portrait on the beach and I met this this young man I think he's 16 or 17 and it's very rare for me to go out as, as somebody who's a little bit fanatical about you know oh how good is you know a landscape or a pictorial scene I mean you know a beautiful sunset isn't good enough because anybody can take a photo of that so I, so I'm always saying okay we gotta push it we gotta think about tone control or zones and and subtlety and Elijah Hanley is uh, a young man that I met and I've kind of been following along with his work and he's just doing some really phenomenal stuff along kind of these lines of of what you guys see me into of you know not just posting a ton of photos but posting stuff that is really of quality and I'm just going to kind of flip through them a little bit yeah, here as, as I I love, uh, the, I love the saturation that's that's my thing I love he's, like he's doing some really phenomenal work and it's clear that you know he's not just running around click click clicking and then and then posting he's really uh, putting some refinement into these, and I'm I'm hoping that I can. Can I use arrow keys? I'm uh, probably not. I'm not sure how I can switch I around. There. Yes, you should be able to. Okay, let me try that. There we go. Um, oh, look at that star trails. Can't go yeah, wrong with the star trails. Can't go wrong with those, and and they're very hard to do well. But he's he's got. I actually sent him an email. Said, hey, I'm going to talk about you tonight. Put a few more images because I don't I don't think he's terribly active on Google Plus. But these are some that I've seen coming through his Facebook page and stuff. I mean, and just some real subtle stuff. I mean, the the pictorial. You know, you can say, oh, oh you know, yeah, I mean, a great sunset. Yeah, Who are well. you to say it's not a great sunset? Well, the question is, was it a great sunset that, you know, you, know, you just kind of tripped over and you took a snapshot of, or were you really crafting with it? Because there's, there's so many beautiful images being made. How do we stand out? And I think that refinement of tone and line and detail and all that kind of stuff is, is really important. So I would, uh, yeah, check this guy out. Check, check him out on Google+, Plus. you know, maybe his Facebook or something like that. But I think, uh, you know, I... This is somebody that I want to chat more with because somebody that's this young, that's thinking about refinement in their images, thinking about controlling subtle details. To me, that's that's saying something. To be honest, as, as many photographers as there are, I just uh, I just don't see that very often yeah. in, in terms of really understanding and, and looking at how we can how we can master light because that's what this is all about. And yes, any any camera and anybody can take a photo, but what can you do with it? So yeah. I, I think. That, that that's why that's why he's up here today. So Lija Hanley, L I J A H H A N L E Y. Check him out, and uh, it's he he he's he's 
he's going in the right direction with this. I, I'm liking what he's doing, and I hope he continues to keep refining this and, and just keep getting better and better because he's got a ton of potential. Very cool. Cool, Gavin. Thanks for that. All right, uh, okay, Sarah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tee you up, and um, you show us who you think deserves the spotlight tonight. Okay. Let's see if I can handle this. Oh. Hold on, I only have myself up. That's not going to work. <laughs> I was going to say, wow, but that I looks also amazingly have, like I, you. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't have that many followers. I would have been a good pick, maybe. <laughs> Come visit me, too. I know. Exactly. You can submit yourself. Go ahead. What about me? No. Um, I actually I picked one of my, um, somebody who's in one of my circles, um, Jen Bebb. They're yep. a, a husband-wife team, fantastic. And I've always loved their stuff, but um, you can see like some of their some of her images. I love this one. In fact, go full screen. Will that work for you guys? Yeah, do it. It just gets rid of that little. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Um, <clears throat> so you can see a little bit of the work here, and then she's got. Um, there was even another book in here that I will show you guys. Oh, this one for first. Nice. Yeah, so this is just one wedding, which I just That's loved. Love her creativity. Nice. It's Beb Studios, um, and they're I believe they're in Canada. So good people, great photography. Yeah. And just uh, I liked some of this kind of stuff too. They were doing a little bit of like layout in their posts. Yeah. Yep. A lot of low contrast stuff, which is interesting because everybody's like, oh, my style is high contrast, which means the highlights are all blown out. But it's the opposite yeah, here. Contrast, real subtle. High contrast and oversaturated. That's low <laughs> contrast and desaturated. And just subtle. Yeah, subtle is good. And a lot of variety and stuff, too. I mean, you see a little bit of the, you know, you see stuff like this, but then you'll see something that's a little more Mixing kind it of up. consistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there was another one in here that had rounded corners. This is another layout piece. I love the I love their use of native space and um, yeah. just yep, a those lot color of blocks. yeah I love yeah that. yeah so that good choice. So that oh. is the Bebs. Oh, those are the rounded corners. I knew they were somewhere. Very cool. And I will release you. Hold on. Release it, and we'll pop over to Martin. Martin, you can show us who you want to uh, put in the spotlight tonight. It always takes a second. <laughs> it's like I'm on it. Hey Martin, I don't know if you. Hey, can you? Oh, yeah, can you? Can you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So this guy is um. Is his name's Hen Hen Henki Lee, uh, from Jakarta, and I'm I'm pretty impulsive. I mean, I'm I'm going to show you someone that I have literally just found a few days ago. Um, but this guy's work is I, I just love his sensitivity. He has, um. This is work that I, I see that a lot of it is it, that it's from Vogue, Italy. So this guy's not not necessarily a a newcomer in that he's he's you know he he doesn't show his work, but he is very new to uh, Google Google Plus, and he also he started working with uh, a pinhole camera. It's the Lens Baby pinhole camera adapter, and it, it's just I just like the way he's. I like the sensitivity of his work. I think he's he's coming up with some really nice stuff. Uh, it looks. I looked at his profile, and he on on a different website. It seems that he's only been photographing for the last uh, three years or so. So he's doing the right things. He's getting noticed. Um, these are these shots that we're looking at right now are beautiful. I've I've got you know the these are all pinhole things and pinhole images, and I just oh, love nice. the sensitivity that he's got here. Yeah. Great space and composition here, and yeah. the right. Is, is, right. is beautiful. Adam right. Um, so yeah, this guy. Hen uh, let's go back to his profile. Henke Lee. Uh, I I really recommend that you check this guy out. He's he's doing a lot of a lot of good stuff here. Very cool. Very cool. All right, rocking. Derek Story. I presume you have somebody you think is worthy of your commentary tonight? Well, I actually did do my homework this time. Last, <laughs> <laughs> last time, I was a bad boy. Uh, let me see if here if I can make this work. <laughs> Green chair, that's it. All right, here we go, here we go. Let's go. 
I think I think I'm mastering the technology. Good job. There it is. Did I do it? Yep. 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 Yeah. 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 So uh, the, I picked this guy not because he needs uh, the attention, because he's actually doing uh, quite well on Google Plus. His name's uh, Greg. Uh, was it Schmigel? S C H M I G E L. Schmigel. 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 I think. Schmigel. There it is. You know what? I'm going to go with Schmigel. But the, uh, uh, I came up through photojournalism, and I, I love photojournalism. And uh, this particular gallery of his that I'm uh, scrolling through right now is all with a mobile phone, is mobile photography. And uh, I like the idea of, I mean, I love shooting with my iPhone 4S and in addition to everything else I shoot with. And I love the idea of, uh, you know, street photography with it and uh, journalism with it. And I think he just does a nice job. I, I like the cleanness of his uh, black and whites. And uh, I think in part I like looking at his work because it just reminds me of a, of a place in time where this is what I was doing a lot, too. Nice. I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go back up so you can see his name since I, I'm sure I just totally butchered it. There's his name right there. <laughs> I did find him. I just started typing him and he came up. So. And just so everybody knows, I'll be who's watching, I'll be putting all these names and giving them to Trey. So they'll be on the post when he does share oh, the video of this. Yeah. Oh, Very good. Cool. All Very right. Cool. All right. Let's see if I can unshare now. You did it. You're back. You're back. I'm back. I'm back. Am I okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. And last right. but not least here, uh, so my share is, or the person that I want to highlight is um, a, a woman who is, is a husband and wife team, actually. And Shirley Lowe, I'm, I'm going to highlight her perf her profile in, in particular. But like Derek's choice, she is not unknown on Google+. In fact, I think she 120... 1,704 people <laughs> have her in circles oh, already, but <laughs> I'm going to screen fair. share so you can see why uh, okay. 120,000 people have her in circles. So she is... Uh, Mine wasn't 120,000, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> my, my guy Mine has less like than 4,000, so yeah. let's get him out. <laughs> Mine had like you know? 500. Yeah. <laughs> We're just she's saying, awesome. Frederick. She's yeah. awesome. I interviewed her, she and her husband, uh, Charles, on uh, This Week in Photo, I think it was last week, and their philosophy around photography, let me get into their photos while or this particular album that we were talking about, I think it was this one, yeah. So uh, their style and their whole methodology and mindset behind photography is they want to do shots that sort of talk about Earth and just sort of, you know, becoming one with the world and that kind of thing. And that's in their head when they're out shooting and making these images. You know, it's not just about, okay, let me go out and, and find a pretty picture. Mm. It's about, I want to, I want to go out nice. there and create that's something so cool. that, that talks specifically about the world and about the Earth and how we can become one with the Earth and how we are all made of stardust and, you know, all that stuff, and I just thought it was really, it was all really interesting how they they approach this. Plus, they're like a one-two punch. They're a husband-wife team that live in the D.C. area, and they work together. And sometimes they use each other in their compositions. Like, let me go back to, uh, let me see if I can find that one shot. I'm probably not going to be able to find it because they update this all the time. I think. Um, yeah, hang on. Let me see if I can get it. Go to photos. I'm lost. Anyway, anyway, go to Shirley Lowe's profile, and you'll see all of her work there. I don't want to take too time, too much time on it, since she already, you know, she has a couple of thousand followers right now. <laughs> but she's awesome. You can see why. Both oh. of the, both of them are awesome. They do some really impressive work. And it's not for me. It's not so much, you know, that okay, they they they're technically competent, which they are. But I just like the mindset behind that they're when they go out. And you'll hear it in the interview if you listen to the interview that I did with them. But they, when they go out, they specifically have a shot in mind and a methodology and sort of a mindset in mind when they go out to create something rather than, you know, a lot of people, myself included, sometimes when I go out, I'm like, hey, I just want to go get a good shot of something. You know, <laughs> so, I don't know. So anyway, that is my, that's my selection. Beautiful work. Yeah, yeah. great, great stuff. Very much so. He is awesome. 
All right, guys, we're at the end of the show. We went a little bit long, so I want to wrap things up now. Let's start on the side with Derek. Derek, where are where are you at on the ether, on the Ethernet, on the internet, and all that magic? Uh, everything runs through thedigitalstory.com, so uh, that's that's the watering hole for me. And uh, podcasts, workshops, and then all my uh, you know uh, Twitter and Facebook stuff too. All right, thedigitalstory.com. The digital story, yes. And Mr. Gavin Syme, where are you at? Where can people go up and stalk you and find out more about you? Uh, you can find me on my website, Gavin, uh, excuse me, Syme Studios, S-E-I-M Studios.com. I have lots of projects, including the podcasts and my pictorials and portraits and all, all this stuff. So that's kind of the home where you can get to everything, including the presets and the freebies and my, my tips on editing and all that kind of stuff on Syme Effects. And, of course, I'm on... I'm on uh, Google Plus, Twitter, at Gavin Syme, it's, and it's S-E-I-M, it's kind of a weird name, but uh, SymeStudios.com, you can pretty much get to everything I do, and uh, so head over there, check it out, see what you think. Very cool, all right. And Martin, Mr. Martin Bailey, where, where are you at? Uh, everything goes uh, for, with me to, from, uh, everything's from MartinBaileyPhotography.com, uh, but I, I'd also like, I'm, I'm at the moment trying to gauge interest in a printing and uh, a, a full color management uh, workshop and seminar that I'm going to be doing in the States and in Australia and the UK this, later this year. Uh, so if, any, if anyone is interested in that, uh, no obligation at this point, but if you could go over to Pixels to Pigment, and that's either a TO or number two, pixels to pigment.com and drop your name into the sign up for form there and let me know that you're interested, then I'll. Uh, I'll keep you in, in touch on that. I'll keep Very in touch well. with you on that. Awesome. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Martin. And Miss Thank Sarah you. France, where can people go yes. to find out more about you? Um, you can always find me at sarahfrance.com, and it's S-A-R-A, -A, no H, and France, just like the country. Um, I'm also on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Google+, Plus, all under the same name. Sarah, S-A-R-A, -A, France. Got it. Right. So just you could just say just Google me, Sarah France. People will find you. Know, you know, just Google me. I'm about the first last I checked, eleven pages of Google. If you put in Sarah France, at least. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> <Seriously>. <laughs> Apparently, there's no one else with that name. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. That's I know. Cool. And uh, listeners, if if you're looking for me or watchers, if you're looking for me, um, you can find me at my site, frederickvan.com, or uh, I'm the host of a podcast called This Week in Photo. You can find our web home at thisweekinphoto.com, or you know people call us Twip from time to time, or you can find us on um, iTunes. Just search for Twip, all that stuff, or Google. You'll find us there as well. And that's it. That's the end of Trey's Variety Hour number 36, The Evolution and Revolution of Photography. Hey, uh, Tony, would you like to tell us about Twit Photo tomorrow, please? Yeah, uh, tomorrow we'll actually have um, our coverage from uh, Norway with um, a few interviews for, with uh, Leo and Catherine and a bunch of um, awesome photographers. So. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's at what, 1 30, 1 30 Pacific? Yeah, tomorrow, um, Tuesdays at 1 30 uh, Pacific. Cool. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks, everybody, for, for taking time out of your Monday evening to hang out and party with Trey. And <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and hang out in the hangout virtually with me. I appreciate the time, and uh, have a good night. You too. You too. Thank thanks you. for having me, everyone. Bye, Take care, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.